Okay, welcome back to those who are visiting live streaming. So we will continue on with our presentations. Next up is library. Good afternoon. I'm happy to present the library's business plan first. So I'll let you get your documents open. We're on page one looking at the KPIs. The KPI categories will remain the same for 2018. And uh, we have the projections outlined there. There's not much more to say uh, about the KPIs. We feel that these are uh, useful in helping us look at how we do business. So we'll be keeping them the same. We have three major initiatives. Uh, we have the Bookmobile Phase 2, Marketing Strategy and Mental Health and Wellness Phase 2. On page 3 of the document is the breakdown and project description for those. So as you know, uh, in 2017, uh, currently we're working on Bookmobile Phase 1, and that is the research into what goes into that, looking at a business plan, a business case for that, sorry, and uh, what a budget might look like. So Phase 2 uh, will be looking at the fundraising and awareness for the project. Uh, this will be a multi-year project, so um, we anticipate uh, not having anything on the ground for a bit yet. So outlined there, uh, we're supporting our own strategic priorities the county strategic priority and we're supporting the corporate initiative of lean process and communication strategy. We have our internal staff time that we'll be using and a bit of advertising money that is already in the budget so it's not additional to the advertising budget it's already there. We'll just divert it toward bookmobile. Uh, project number two, the marketing strategy. So um, we've been working uh, with some software to really look at uh, marketing, uh, market data and try to get a better handle on where we could better market. So we'll be producing a marketing strategy uh, based on that data. Uh, it'll uh, take some internal staff time uh, already budgeted for and advertising. Again, this will already be part of the advertising budget. It's not changing. We'll just be diverting some money uh, toward this project. It supports our own strategic priority, county strategic priority, and the corporate initiative of um, communication strategy. Project number three is health, mental health and wellness phase two. So as you know, the county launched the mental health and wellness program. Phase two for us is going to be specific to the library staff. So we will look at um, creating a training plan for library staff that focuses on their interaction with the public. Uh, they deal with a lot of different issues um, when they're dealing with the public in the branches. So we want to give them some tools for them to better able to deal with those issues. Um, it's supporting our own strategic priority to uh, develop our staff, the county strategic priority, and supports the corporate initiative of mental health and wellness. Internal staff Staff time is uh, absorbed in the budget already and some external training resources will be required for that. And that is the library business plan. Any questions? Hearing none. So moving on to the operating budget, I'll draw your attention to the dashboard first. So as you can see, we have three programs identified in the library. Library administration, and that's everything from supplies to salaries. Ongoing ventures, at this time we don't have any ongoing ventures. And library special projects, that is the literacy, early literacy program, Me, You, and a Book too. So you'll see um, line uh, 29, the transfer from reserves for operating is 39,000. So this includes um, using operating reserves to offset the cost of internet service to our 17 branch locations, and that's $14,000 that we utilize there. Uh, 15,000 from the operating reserve will be um, going toward funding the uh, literacy project, uh, early literacy project, and 10,000 will be used to offset the cost of e-resources and database subscription. That's what makes up that number there. You'll see under the section budget increase percentage, we have a total increase proposed of 6.4%. 5.6% of that is salaries. And I'll go into more detail when I go into the analysis on what makes up those. Um, and then you'll see uh, budget increase by pressure category. 5.3% uh, is maintained services. And so the maintained services percentage increase is entirely due to salaries and benefits. And then we have under um, service initiatives a 1% increase. So we're looking at a variance amount of 
$181,740 for a 6.4% increase. <coughs> so looking at analysis total department, I'll take you through that. Since we have only really the one program that we're um, having any uh, variance in, I'll, I will only look at this uh, sheet. Uh, you can see uh, everything that I'm saying here is also reflected in the notes uh, tab. So looking at the um, starting, sorry, at the top, the 157,940 increase to the library administration program, no change to the ongoing ventures and no change to the library special projects um, and a revenue decrease of 23,800. So looking at the salaries, wages and benefits, um, we see 136,389. This increase factors in the percentage increase in both of our um, collective agreements. Um, it also uh, has the assumed 2% cost of living increase in there. Also um, to note we had last year, uh, or sorry, current year 2017, eight people moving on the grid and in 2018 we'll have 12 people moving on the grid in our highest paid uh, job group. So that's what's um, driving that uh, cost increase there. You'll see uh, that 129,697 is under maintained services. So that reflects um, status quo for all of our staffing. The $6,692 uh, reflects uh, the desire to increase one position from part-time to full-time. So we have um, eight library supervisors, seven of which are full-time. We have one remaining in the part-time category, uh, which we'd like to see moved to full-time at the cost of $6,692. Uh, no change to the headcount. Under staff-related costs, this reflects, um, this decrease of 9,500 reflects a reduction in the staff training costs uh, now that Loyalist has been completed and also a slight um, reduction in the projected uh, service award costs for 2018. Contract services, we're looking at a decrease of 4,400 as our various um, contracts uh, change year to year and, and there's slight savings there. Material, uh, this is a catch-all category for things like supplies, equipment, maintenance, advertising, telephone bills, um, anything else that doesn't fall into another category. So we have an increase of um, 25,850. And you'll see that um, 4,600 of that um, is falling into maintained services and then 21,250 is falling into service initiatives. And what this reflects here is the need for uh, non-capital equipment and that is cell phones for our 17 branches. And tied to the cell phones, of course, is a um, data plan and telephone cost of $7,000. So that's driving that uh, we want to equip all of our branches with cell phones when there's a power outage or if there's um, ever any uh, safety uh, issues or potential uh, threats to the staff, they at, the, at this point in time don't have a great way of connecting to the outside world. So we're looking at that as a, a safety measure for our staff in the branches. Moving on to the transfer grants, uh, 6,641. This reflects the 2% rent increase paid to municipalities for uh, branch buildings. Under fleet costs, uh, we have a slight increase uh, to reflect the cost of vehicle maintenance and fuel uh, for our two library vans. So you're seeing, seeing 3,000 under the maintained services. The 2,000 under service initiatives reflects uh, the increased costs associated with a leased vehicle for library headquarters. Facility costs, a small decrease of $2,000, and that just reflects some utility uh, savings uh, for library headquarters. That $84,800 is the total cost for maintenance um, for the library headquarters building. So that brings us to $157,940. Going down into revenues by type, our provincial grant of $1,888 or sorry, $487 is unchanged and has remained unchanged since the mid-90s. Uh, we don't expect it to change in 2018. 
For our own funds, we're seeing um, a, a reduction of 26,000. And that means we're pulling less from the operating reserves than we did in 2017. Uh, we have 10,000 less required to offset our database subscriptions, uh, 10,000 less required uh, for staff training due to um, the loyalist uh, training completion and um, 3,000 not required for memberships that we had pulled out in 2017. So fees and services, a small increase of 1300 which reflects our anticipated revenue from printing and faxing services. All other revenue looks to probably remain the same. And an additional <coughs> increase of 900 in revenue um, from sale of promotional material. Our FTE increase of 0 0.16 is a reflection of that part-time supervisor change to full-time. Otherwise, no other changes there. And so then that is the analysis of uh, the operating, 6.4%, 181,740. Questions? Hearing none. Okay, moving on to capital. We'll start with the dashboard here as well. So just to go through the categories that the library utilizes in capital, um, we have equipment, uh, which is our books, our audiovisual material, and processing costs for the branch collections. We have um, technology, uh, which after 2017, um, this item won't fall into our budget, but will fall into the um, uh, ITS budget. So we don't anticipate any expenditures in 2018. If we have any expenditures in this category going forward, it would be something outside of the replacement cycle of our hardware. Uh, vehicles, uh, this includes the two uh, library delivery vans and um, and you'll see uh, further down in 2019, that's the anticipated purchase of a bookmobile. So that's been placed in there. Uh, furniture and fixtures includes office furniture for headquarters and branch staff. Um, we replace this as items wear out. And under building, uh, this includes shelving for our branch as well as some of the furniture that we plan to ref refresh um, as needed or as items wear out. So you'll see that line 38 shows the net levy requirement across the forecast. Uh, we've tried to keep it consist as consistent as possible to ensure that we have sustainable capital spending as well as healthy reserves. You'll see our transfer to reserves we've tried to maintain um, to um, c ensure that they're consistent as well. So I'll, I'll go into the, uh, the, the summary now to delve into those numbers a bit more. So we'll look at column L, the change over uh, 2017. It's a few numbers not showing here. Okay, so for equipment, we're showing a decrease in spending by 19,500. So this is attributed to a $15,000 reduction in the book budget and a $5,000 reduction in the processing costs that are associated with that reduction. Um, and then moving on to uh, technology, you'll see that there's a decrease of 46,173 and that reflects the transition of the um, IT spending to uh, ITS. Thank you. So then moving to furniture and fixtures. So we are showing a decrease of 5,000, which just reflects um, decreased spending to replace office furniture and building um, interior components. A decrease of 10,000 reflects a decreased spending on shelving and furniture compared to 2017. Then moving down to revenues. So we're showing a uh, 
reduction in own funds of uh, 67,173. So this mostly reflects uh, removing the spending that we would have had for um, ITS. Uh, it also means that we're requiring $20,000 less uh, from the reserve as well. And then we always have our donations um, as, a, as a revenue piece for our capital, which we get throughout the year. So overall, the reduction in capital requirement is 12,500 or 3.3%. And the consolidated percentage change uh, for both operating and capital for the library is a 5.24% increase or $169,240. Thank you, Melissa. Questions, comments? Hearing none. Okay, thank, thank you. you.